Hello, good afternoon, welcome to Made Day Live here on TV3. Thanks very much for making a date with us. My name is Scott Park with Yassari. It's coming to you live from our studios here at Adesawe in Kanda, Accra. And coming up this afternoon. Minister of Energy and PDS officials in Manyakrobo following disputes over electricity tariffs. Also heavy security presence in Cherponi ahead of the visit by Defence Minister. And also well, international France, British Prime Minister resigns. We will be live in the United Kingdom. We've got details of all these stories plus many more coming up in the next 60 minutes. We're streaming live on Facebook. You can also join us with your views, comments and suggestions on any of our top stories this hour. Visit our social media page. Uh, our handle is TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, the Eastern Regional Minister and Head of the Regional Security Council, Eric Kwachi Dafo, has described the incident between the youth at Odumase and the police as sheer vandalism. He's asked the police to clamp down on the United Krobo Youth Group operating illegally and champion routes in the area. Meanwhile, the Lower Manya Krobo Municipal Assembly is under heavy police protection. Calm has been restored to the area. The police arrested some 30 youth in Tuesday's incident. The Regional Security Council, the Municipal Security Council and the Traditional Council had closed-door emergency meetings on Wednesday before briefing the media. The Eastern Regional Minister Eric Kwache Dafo expressed worries some residents have been made to think that their forefathers signed some MOU which bars them from paying electricity bills after 50 years of the PDS assistance because the voter league displaced some of them. He accused the United Krobo movement for churning out misinformation and pointed out the only free government intervention was free senior high school and not electricity. He charged the police to arrest all culprits. The PRO of the Manyaklo Traditional Council, Nene Asada Aho, urged the United Krobo group to exercise restraint. There was a time that the ECG came here. They said they would rectify that this thing. Some were ratified, some two were not. So they have instructed that they should come individually because it's, a, it's not a group thing. If you have a problem, you come there, we'll solve it for you. Instead of them to go there, this, those, the, the group which claim themselves, they are misleading the people, so they didn't go. Now, family of a 23-year-old special needs child allegedly shot by the police in Manya Krobo on Wednesday are demanding investigations and prosecution for the killing. An emotional 69-year-old mother, Constance Pate, is also demanding the police bear the responsibility of burial for the child. Uh, Thomas Pate was allegedly shot from the back during the clash between the police and residents of Manya Krobo. She spoke with my colleague, Komla Kluche. In the home of one of the victims who met uh, his untimely death in that shootout between the police and some of the rampaging residents of the Manya Krobo area, uh, this particular child, we are told, is a special needs child. 24-year-old uh, Thomas Pathé is called. The mother is here. She has been grieving of the pain. We'll just put a question to her. Uh, what she knows happened to the child as uh, he was shot. Ma, but you're frozen. Emia, I tell Maku, Maku, comfort Maku party. Now, Wubano, a dear no bit in mere catch a funny home. You know, my name, I think, will take all be your head. It be a young free. I can't go bepe. I can't go bepe. No fear, no eka fear. Pechu anya ne yo. Ibe na ne. Wacho ni ganye. Ibi ala paka mi. E a e a pe fufuto ne malo. So at this point, uh, 
police for ambe humo na so one can chere mo eh dien poti ne si e ne ne ka je no si o police ko melo ni ko me abana ba abado mo kan ne ne ba tutu ji no lo ni ko me bana bana mo jan mo lo o police go bai ngo no wa no wa ha support e police go bai ngo ka je bene no no happy e ami bi e lo no go no o bai ngo jan police go bai ngo within fear him. Twenty-three years. It's not twenty-four years as men speculated. But you go make a journey, mean your gravy. You go make a journey, mean your journey, your mark gravy. That be it, me be it, me be like a journey, mean your eighteen. Thirty-three. Twenty-three. Thirty-three. Twenty-three. Ah, twenty. Twenty-three. 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 Yeah. Cecilia, no. Idea, na mo pese police for anye anase government anye fa umu wobane wu. Idea na opese police for anye. Pio no nwe rabu di po ne bo. Pio no mi no songa police ame happy ham. Al eh. And we be all. Ah, I be all. Nah, I had that away. Wobano, Wednesday now, all be free for you. If I know, catch us at all. Did we saw them at you? You did okay. Oh, I don't know. I have a letter and a free kind of fellow. Learning me, eh, my chairman, my dear poor. Come, my chairman, I have a fear. King of boys, eh, Nicotta, mommy. Let poor Nicotta, my uncle, but it's the same. A yaga, a duke, you say, son of Cotoma. Eka fiye, la eka sumo sumo boysi fiye we se ni kota mai, la na maje kwa kene pia he. Ni mi po i la de eka eka pale se e ba we, ne eka la e maya, ni de ne nyumu, ni mi pininga na de ne manye kene nyasi kau, bene manu la aka akbele kufosi. So that's that's the mother of uh, the 23 year old uh, Thomas Pate who we were told um, was shot uh, dead allegedly by the police. The police have not met the family. They have not told them anything. But for her, her demands just quick, and it should be done with a sense of urgency. Get a coffin to bury the child bury the child for her and look after her. Some form of compensation of the salt she is looking for. Nonetheless, some investigation should equally be done into the death of the child. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Bungno, Manyakrobo. All right, so that was earlier information put through by Kumala Kluche uh, at Menya Cobra. But we're going to go live there right now because the Energy Minister, John Peter Mewu, uh, together with some top officials of the Energy Ministry, are currently uh, live on the ground. Uh, we're going to be going there shortly uh, where Kumala Kluche is also standing by. The company of Ghana Limited and the police over what they describe as unfair billings to them with respect to their electricity bills. The action resulted in one death and series of injuries or serious injuries to some people who are receiving treatment in the hospital now. Let me just look at uh, some of the concerns that they have been raising. The, this is just one bill that we have named. We are not going to mention, but this is from the Electricity Company of Ghana Limited. Bill issued uh, on October uh, on October 6, 2018, and the current bill, as it as it was at the time it was issued, was 442 cities. The previous bill 
was 10,605 CDs.78. An amount payable is 11,047.98. This is what the people challenge. This is what they call a ripoff. Uh, your life on TV3, you tell us uh, this is how much you owe. Do you admit that you owe uh, the power distributing company some amount of money? For owing them, since we've been using electricity, we admit we owe. But the contention is that we have over billing. And because of that, for some time now, you know, some time in Ghana, we know the whole country, uh, there was a problem with overbilling, and they admitted that they had a software for billing, and it had a mistake. This problem was corrected all over the nation, Ghana. But for our, our area here, Kroboland, it was never resolved. Two, after over two years ago, we went there contesting, asking them to clarify, and when you go there, they throw you away, telling you that you have owed. And, and so it resulted in some brow some time ago. Now, we have been there and we have been talking about the issue. Recently, they came asking us to pay the current bill and the overbilling that came some years ago that they have failed to resolve. Now, this is what they have been doing. Now that they realize that we are not giving them because we think they are oppressing us, now they are going to deploy the police. Ghana police is supposed to defend us, come in and attacking us to pay. Well, well, I mean, if you fall foul of the law, mm -hmm. the police are in their right yes. to uh, mm -hmm. restore law and we order. Know. But let's come to the issue of overbilling that you have raised. Mm -hmm. In what capacity are you raising issues with overbilling? Who determines overbilling? Yes, uh, we, we are not uh, very well vested in reading the meter, the bills. But common sense will tell you that if I've been paying uh, five, 50 cities, for the same gadgets, even if there is tariff adjustment, I don't think it will move from 50 cities to 200 cities. Mm. I don't think so, common sense. Okay. And then we complained, and the ECG by then admitted that there is overbilling. Yes. Mm. This thing has not been corrected, okay. and the bills have been accumulating after that. We do not have much time, though, mm -hmm. but I mean, saying this is uh, this incident, uh, something of four days ago, there has been a regional security meeting and then also a municipal security meeting. Mm -hmm. The decision of RECSEC is that they are going to approach this with a human face because it is human beings that are involved. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. you owe the uh, utility mm -hmm. company a duty to pay mm -hmm. whatever you pay uh, you owe mm -hmm. are you ready to pay we are ready to pay and we will pay what we're asking them is that they should work out the difference in overbilling bring us our due bills mm -hmm. and we will pay great. but what they are telling us that we should pay all great okay let me find out from uh, this man as well yeah. chief what's your name my name is moses Ujabla. moses okay. yes so, ex-service man wo1 okay Moses, let me look at let me look at yours. Your bill was issued to you uh, just this March. March, March 2019, and your current bill is 150.74. Yeah. Uh, your previous balance was 4,242.14. You are supposed to pay 4,392.88, out of which you have gone to pay 100 CDs. PDS says. If you do not pay the over 4,000, the 4,392, you will be disconnected. In fact, you tell me that you have been disconnected. Yes. You admit that you owe yes. this amount. Because I'm a, I'm a consumer and I've consumed electricity. You don't challenge the 4,000 at all. I don't challenge, I will pay. But it, is, pay their, when? it is their mistake. They, they refuse to bring the bills for more than two to three years. So if they want us to pay, these bills should be spread for a period. So that we should be able to pay. But if you said we should pay, look, I'm only 4,000. I want to, I can only afford 100. So how much is left? And you said because I've not paid all the rest, you are going to discuss. Since Monday, I've been in darkness. But if you if you owe, just like you are owing over 4,000, somebody is also owing over 10,000, somebody is also owing over 5,000. The company is in distress. The more reason we are having challenges with electricity, the distribution and supply in the country. If you yeah. do not pay, how do they serve the nation well? well? This is what I'm saying, that over a period, these people have not been bringing the bills. You understand? And it's you not chase them. Do I have to go to electricity and tell them that, uh, how much is my bill? 
It is their duty. They are being paid. People are being paid for this type of job. They come and read the meters. Do we go and ask them to come and read meters? But they come and read the meters and they write numbers and they go to the office. But if you admit that you are a consumer and you owe, it is your duty and your they responsibility. They must tell me that I owe. They must tell me that I owe because they come to read the meters. You don't owe them a visit. No, I only go there to pay my bills. I only go there to pay my bills. This okay. is what I do. So now they say that they, will, they would approach this with a human face. Uh, what, how do you as a people want to sit down again with the PDS for uh, you to find a lasting solution? We want to, we want to dialogue with them. We want to dialogue with them. We owe them. We are not saying we are not going to pay. We have been paying these bills since 1969 when this voter lake came. So this is not the first time we are going to pay bills. And so the, the way they overbill us, they have to take time and then sit down with us and then we see how, how best we can pay. Okay. Let me look at... Uh, let me just talk And the briefly. police should be withdrawn. Mm -hmm. The police. Okay. Look at let this me. thing. My bill hasn't come till this time. Look at this bill. It is October. Yes. You see? This and then was in October. Very good. And I paid uh, uh, 100. Uh, my, and my, you are owing... You are owing 877. And 77.88... Uh, which is the the past bill you you owed was 823 yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. currently so that i paid one and six hundred but they have not billed him yet so so for you <laughs> you you have gone to them have you gone to them to find out whether you uh, uh, the money you owe on, them on my they part, can strike a balance on my part they come to read the, uh, the other house when I ask them, where is my bill, they tell me, okay, they have forgotten it. Or they were chasing, they couldn't get it. And I say, if you, you make this thing to accumulate, how do I pay? You see, that's why this man is telling you that if this thing is accumulated, then you should give us time to spread it so that we can pay. You see, the delay shouldn't force us to pay the bills. You see, it is there. The, how do I owe someone and they go to him that, how much am I going, uh, owing you? He has you to admit, come to me. But if you admit that you owe, then you have to make the effort to go. And they have to come to me with the bill. You see, previously, from two, I think you, 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 you were paying your bill like that. So previously, we could read the bill. If it's 887, and this is something, you subtract, you get the rate. You get the quantity you use, you see, and then you multiply it by rate. Even you can determine your own self. Now it isn't so. They accuse you, they <laughs> accuse you that when they disconnected, you still went ahead and illegally connected. Some of you illegally connected did you do that it is a wrong conception it is wrong totally wrong there is nobody here who has gone to connect this thing himself if you, if if they doubt they can see that they can go to the individual houses and see if it isn't the this thing the, 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 what we call a meter if somebody has gone to buy a, a new meter to fix it here the meter on the house in the houses are all their meters if they have seen any strange meter here, it means what they are saying is correct. Uh, but if the meter is for electricity, then it, it means they are wrong. Mm. The frustrations of these people are so high such that uh, they are not willing to bend their necks. They are not willing uh, to back down on one demand from the PDS that it should consider them and restore power to them. Those who they feel have been wrongfully disconnected they should be reconnected for them to enjoy power in as much as they make efforts to pay the bills that they owe the ECG. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Manya Krobo. Right, away from uh, Manya Krobo where Komla just reported, let's make a quick dash to Trapani where the defense minister is visiting following renewed clashes. Sporadic clashes between Konkombes and Chokosis has been ongoing for the past few days. Uh, we'll soon speak to our correspondent Zubaida Ishmael who is with the minister of defense. Uh, but before that, uh, let me just go on Skype now and speak to... Uh, the African Center for Counterterrorism, which is meanwhile urging government to take all the necessary steps to ensure peace. Now, the security think tank also wants government to take steps to ensure neutrality. Uh, let's go to Skype now and speak to Executive Director of the African Center for Counterterrorism and Security, Emmanuel Kutin. Thank you very much for your time. So, we know the Defense Minister has gone there. Uh, is this a show of interest by government in this matter? Well, thank you and good afternoon to your very cherished listeners and viewers. In fact, government has indeed showed interest in the matter. I think that 
the manner government communicates or the processes government had put in place in addressing this conflict is not yielding the results we all desire. For instance, if you look at the press release we just brought out, we are thinking that the 4 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew is too sensitive on the part of the indigenous, given that we are in the holy month of Ramadan and they are Muslims undergoing their peaceful fasting. Also, it will have on to hardship on students. Just imagine you close from school at 2 and you get home at 3 and at 4 you have to go to bed. The other aspect is the economic dimension of it because these are farmers. How can a farmer wake up at uh, 6 in the morning and if you know the terrain well, the farms are quite far away from the, uh, the, their homes. You go to farm and come and sleep at 4 p.m. We think that KFU doesn't ne uh, necessarily and trust the uh, 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 endangered trust in peace building process. At least we have Boku we can learn from. I think it's about time we draw lessons from conflicts we, are, uh, we have addressed in the past. The other issue had to do with the neutrality of our security personnel who are on peacekeeping in both districts because there are counter accusations from the Kunkumba side of uh, the security personnel supervising the Chekosis to burn down their communities and the Chekosis equally accusing the Kunkumbas, especially the defense minister as Amin Kunkumbas. But the truth of the matter, as a think tank and as we know, and what we have gathered from the ground, the Kunkumbas are not even happy with the defense minister because they've not heard him speak over the matter. The other issue we raised was about political leadership. And political leadership transcends into chieftaincy as well. If you look at these two districts, uh, Chiropodi is riddled with a lot of chieftaincy disputes. Sawoba equally is riddled with a lot of chief, uh, chieftaincy disputes. So in the absence of the traditional authority that keeps these people together, it's very difficult to talk to the people and they will listen. So I'm pleading to the government to, as a matter of agency, set up a committee just like they did for Dagbon, and you look at how they can resolve the riddle chieftaincy uh, problems in Saboba and Chirapone. The last but not the least is government to roll out a comprehensive policy and, uh, and let the people know policies that are verifiable about the plans they are putting in place for some of these things from falling into relapse. You realize that there's always the tendency for revenge if there are no pragmatic programs put in place to address the underlying conditions that give rise to the conflict in the first place. And don't forget, a lot of the people's houses have been burned down. They are homeless now. So they uh, uh, more or less, they are helpless. They don't know what to do. And I think the national security is also failing the country because I was expecting that the time this thing occurred uh, at the beginning of the year, we will have put our intelligence on the ground, especially to look at how weapons are being channeled into these conflict areas and see who are sponsoring these uh, 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 weapons. Because if you see the weapons they are using, my brother, we all know the Tari in Sawoba and Chiraponi. There is no way ordinary farmer can have money to own an AK-47 or an MG gun. So I think it's about time collectively we look at this and look at how we can bring peace to Saboba and Chiraponi. Because you realize, and you heard that two Ghanaians were killed along the Burkina Faso and Mali border. This is how it begins, because we have a video in our possession where an indigenous in Chiraponi was calling on Muslims to come to their aid. These are the ungoverned spaces terrorists are, li uh, are looking for. And the earlier we look at the Saboba and Chaponi issue in a comprehensive manner, the better for our national security. There is a security analyst helping us to do some analysis uh, on the recent clashes uh, between the Chaponese and Bimomas in the eastern, in the northern region of Bega Party. You're still watching uh, new midday life here on TV3. We've got some more stories coming up uh, your way. Just. Uh,
Uh, if you've got any comments to share with us uh, on social media, do so on our social media feed. It's uh, TV3GH on Facebook and on Twitter. Now, in other stories, the Center for Socioeconomic Studies has petitioned the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice over a supposed anomaly in the ongoing national identification card registration exercise. The group believes a lot of Ghanaians seeking to receive their cards are being frustrated by processes adopted by the NIA leading to unnecessary long queues at registration centers. The CSS also believes that the NIA is not complying with a high court ruling on the specific particulars needed for the Ghana card registration. It is therefore, among others, asking for Shura to investigate whether the NIA has complied or is complying with a decision by the Human Rights Court. A leading member of the CSS, Albert Wotagbe, has joined me uh, in the studio, uh, so we'll be doing some analysis on this. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so, Emmanuel Mutagbe has joined us in studio. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your time. So, Albert, uh, you've raised certain concerns with regards to the registration process. Exactly what are you saying? Yes, um, you know, the aftermath of the High Court ruling, so we approached the NI, we made a request to them that, okay, we want to look at the processes that you have going mm. through. And then we want to see if we are complying with the law that is governing the registration mm. now. The brain behind this is every civil register, the integrity of every civil register is based on the processes and procedures that is taken to arrive at that register. Mm. And the Ghana card is a very essential document that every Ghanaian has to. So we approach them in good faith, but then for almost a month now, they've not responded to us. So the most logical thing to do is to approach a higher body authority that so you've petitioned Shrai on the matter exactly. and what reliefs are you seeking so we accent try to compel them to pro produce their compliance reports look into their processes if they are complying with the law per the ruling of the courts then look at the process if they are not complying compel them to comply then seek any other look at the whole process as a whole and then if something is not going right Decorate. But the NIA has time and again explained why the process is going that slow. Is it not enough for you? It's not enough. Now, look, let's look at the process itself. Okay. You, you, you start a process. You're given a timeline. Now, if even on the hand side and then on the face of the numbers, Accra is at least 40 million upwards population. Now, let's divide it into two. You have at least 2 million that you are registering now. Now, if you have about, let's say, about 300 and something thousand, centers you are you're registering with or uh, workstations. Now, you're saying that you are registering about, let's say, 20 to about 30 people per day. Now, multiply that by the number of centers you have. Will you fall within that? Now, if Ghanaians are intelligent people and they do these basic calculations, so if I know that this card is essential and within some shortest possible time, if I don't have it, I can assess certain basic social amenities or services then I have to force to do it. So I have to leave whatever I'm doing and then wake up very early at dawn, queue for several days to do it. Now, NIA is not giving an indication that, okay, at the end of the day, if due to the delays of breakdown of machines and all that things, if the process is not completed or enough people are not registered, we will extend the, the process. The queue have been relaxed a little bit. But in the absence of that, they've not done it. So that panic situation is still existing. You, you get it. Mm. And that's even leading to the, the incidence of even people taking bribe to have people registered. So if you expect the Shura to rule in your favor? Oh, we, we, we know tries to be very fair in their de dealings. And we, look, we are not doing this in a bad fit. We are doing this for the people of Ghana, for the ordinary Ghanaian that at the end of the day, all manner of Ghanaians are treated fairly without discrimination. Now, we are specialized to also look at it in the same way. If the process has existed so far and tries to think that, okay, it is the best, we don't have any confidence. Oh, but I'm going to ask you to hold on for me. Uh, let's get on the phone lines now and speak to the Communications Director of the National Identification Authority, Francis Palmdetti, to get some reactions to what Francis and his colleagues have been saying. Thank you, Mr. Palmdetti, for your time. And, and how do you respond to these issues raised by the group? Uh, delays at registration centers, long queues, poor networking, etc. I, I did not follow the interview from the beginning. If you could help me with what 
petition. I know um, there's this issue about the petition. Is that what, you, what we are talking about? Absolutely, sir. Um, it's, it's important for the general public to note that NIA is a creator of statutes. And um, we are obliged to follow the law that um, regulates what we do. So far, that's what we have been doing. We, we would not want to depart from the law which um, regulates our activities. And we wish to also indicate that for persons who have gone through the process so far, um, we, we are aware that some have had a few challenges. Um, quite a number of people are also very satisfied with a service with um, extended or offered to them. For those who um, have been um, victims or would I say those who have not had pleasant experiences, especially for those who are queuing as early as 2 a.m., 8 a.m., etc., for the Ghana card, we know it is a desire and a certain eagerness to get the Ghana card. The enthusiasm is very high. We appreciate that. But our working hours are clearly spelled out. We work between the hours of 8 and 5. We can only do so much within the set time. It is possible that for persons who come to our center, we cannot serve everybody. And so when um, persons who come are unable to get themselves registered, we can only uh, plead with them or appeal to them to be patient. Um, it is our desire to have everybody registered. They should just keep coming to the center. Even if during the process, during the period of the mass registration exercise, they are unable to register, we still, the door is still open. The law says we have to first uh, conduct a mass registration exercise to populate, populate the national identity register. After doing that, we have to set up offices in the district and in the regional capitals to serve persons who um, either are now eligible or were unable to register during the mass. So there will be continuous registration even after the mass registration. The intention of the authority is to register an issue card to every eligible Ghanaian out there. And that is what we seek to achieve, and we intend to achieve it to the best of our abilities. This is not just about your inability to register as many people as you want. Mm -hmm. As Communications uh, Director of the National Education Authority, you certainly cannot be proud of a process uh, that results in delays at registration centers, long queues, poor networking, which obviously can be resolved uh, through improved networks. Uh, you cannot be proud of this, can you? No, um, we, we, there are some things that are within your control. There are some things that are not within your control. The ones that are within your control, you do your best to make sure they are tackled as quickly as possible. So, for instance, if um, in the process of registering, it turns out that your, your information already in our system does not correspond with the information you are currently providing, your record will go into adjudication, and therefore you will not receive your card instantly. And that is a process that we have to go through. It is something set in the system that once you have a situation where an individual's record is not tallying with what they have provided, they must go into adjudication. They will go into adjudication. Where you have an individual who has registered once, may not have received this card, and makes another attempt to register again, there's a 100% hit. You cannot issue out the card because you do not know the intent of the individual, whether he wants to register twice or it is a case of him just trying to get the card and so he has registered twice. This is going to adjudication. You also don't want a situation where you have an individual's record in our database, having two records in our database. All right. Uh, uh, thank you very much, sir. I think your, your point is well made, uh, Francis Pamdez. I think your point is well made. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for your reactions uh, on this. Uh, just quickly wrap up on his reactions. Yes. Um. <laughs> What is what, what is said that the creation of law is started? Yes, we all agree. That's why we want the law to be complied with. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems to suggest that they are a bit limited in solving some of these problems mm -hmm. in the long queues, and I don't think it, they are. You know, sometimes the way you even communicate the processes to people mm -hmm. who even allay their fears that okay, we have enough time. So even if let's say we have five or 60 days to register people in Accra West. Right. Then within that period, people will do the, the simple math and then realize that, okay, even 20 people at a time 
can do the magic. Right. So there's no need to wake up at dawn. Okay. We've gone through you know, mass registration for voters' ID. Right. We don't have this long you know, from dawn. All right. Uh, I think your, your point is also well made. Thank you very much. We've got to go. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your time thank and for joining you us in the studio. Uh, you're still watching Media Live here on TV3. On our MTN video report today, Kojo Damwa reports on the poor state of a bridge at Kaswa in the central region, which causes vehicular traffic. This is the state of uh, a bridge between Kaswa and Nyanyano. It is spoiled for a very long time. And the leaders within this place, they are refusing to repair the bridge. It has been in this state for more than two months. We are pleading that the government and the district assembly will come to the aid of the people of this place. This is the part being spoiled. And this is the part that all the cars from Nyanyano to Kaswa and back are using. Speaking from Kaswa Nyanyano Road, I'm Kojo Damwa. All right, so just like Kojo Damwa, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp on 055-1433-044. That's 055-1433-044. Still ahead, we've got the very latest in international news. We've got business news and sports news. All right, so you're welcome to the business news segment here on Media Life on TV3. Now, the Ministry of Communication is set to mark this year's Girl in ICT Day, which falls on Monday, May 27. Now, as a member of the International Telecommunications Union, Ghana joins the rest of the world to mark the day. The day is earmarked to create a global arena that... Um, inspires and encourages young girls and women to consider careers in growing uh, field of information and communication technology, that's ICT. Now, as part of the celebration, over 500 junior high school students uh, selected from nine districts in the western region will be trained in ICT. This year's celebration will be held at the Takwadi Technical University in the western region. I'm joined in the studio by the Deputy Minister of Communications and also Member of Parliament for Dade Kotopong, uh, Vincent Odote Soa. That's the name I got you right? Soa Odote. Soa Odote. So, thank you for your time. How long have you celebrated you. this occasion? Um, once again, thank, thanks for having me. Um, the girls in ICT have been for the past eight years. It's, it's a day set aside by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, to focus attention on bridging what we call the digital gender divide so that we'll be able to highlight the, and create, uh, highlight and bring to the fore the opportunities and the problems, the threats that, that our, our, our girls and young women face. Is there a the, yawning in, gap in, in, in at this, the moment? Oh, definitely. I mean, um, the, the statistics keeps varied, but I think that the inequalities which exist offline before the advent of technology, when we may not have access to resources, we may not have access to the economic power, where, where in the face of limited resources, the boy child will be sponsored to school instead of the girl child, is translated to, 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 to dig a space. And so it's important that we don't allow that inequality and the imbalance to happen. So the girls in ICT is a day that has been set aside, so I'll be able to focus on, uh, on and, to, and to encourage uh, uh, girls and young women to, risk, to take up technology. How many so, girls have we trained so far? Oh, since we started, um, I, I think about 10,000 young girls. We've been doing about 1,000 each year. But this year, we, we, we brought it down to a f just below 600 mm. uh, from the Western region. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we expect that uh, with, with Sunday, when we bring a lot of established, successful women in IT to mentor those girls mm. who have won the awards in, from the Western region, mm. I mean, they'll, they'll provide the right leadership and the mentor for them to demystify and to mm. disabuse their minds that mm. IT is a preserve mm. for only, 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 mm. only the male mm. counterparts. So beyond just training them, uh, is it something you do to monitor, to evaluate their performance? Uh, you know, in the near future? Yeah, definitely. Last year, for example, all the people who are successful in the Ashanti region were brought to Accra for, uh, for a week mentorship. 
and then we continue to monitor them and all those organizations, third party companies who help us to uh, provide the training, keep monitoring them so that those who excel will hold their hands and will try to, uh, to bring them up to, uh, uh, I mean, to, to encourage them to pursue and to have the confidence to deal with ICTs. Vincent, so I've got to say a big thank you to you for joining us. It's uh, a pleasure. In the studio. Great. So that's all for the business news segment here on Midday Life. We'll take a short break and return with the very latest in sports news. Thanks very much, Yao Fusulabi, for the very latest in sports news. Let's do some international news now. And Theresa May has announced she will step down as Conservative Party leader on June 7. She broke down in tears as she said serving as Prime Minister was the honor of her life. Mrs. May will continue to serve as Prime Minister while a Conservative leadership contest takes place. The Prime Minister was under pressure <coughs> beg your pardon, to quit after a backlash from her own MPs against her Brexit plan. Parliament has rejected her withdrawal agreements three times. Recent attempts to find a formal compromise with Labour also failed. Labour said it was a rehash and they will not support the plans. <coughs> All right, so we're going to go live on Skype now to speak to Amen. Hubert Osei Welbeck is a journalist in the United Kingdom and joins us live on the Skype. So, Hubert, I'm sure you've been monitoring all the very latest developments uh, happening in, in Downing Street. Tell us, what's the mood like in the UK? Yeah, Park, you see, um, I must say that um, in the past decade, um, never in British politics has any subject matter been more divisive and controversial than the subject matter of um, Brexit. And I must say that since announcement to, to depart um, from Downing Street, I've scanned um, social media as well as mainstream media to gauge the mood of um, the public. And I can tell you that the mood of pub the public is in two fronts. Um, one, that of um, expression of sympathy um, towards the Prime Minister, and others also think that um, his head departure, I'm sorry, um, is um, of necessity since um, she's failed to deliver on her mandate, um, that is Brexit. What about Theresa May's own party? We know that she had faced a bit of opposition within her own party. Did this, did this come as news to them? Not at all. Um, the public, um, in general, has been expectant of her resignation long time ago. Um, mind you, in the build-up uh, to the Brexit negotiations, a um, series of resignations were recorded in their party. Um, she failed to gain support from her party members in parliament. Um, even in her cabinet, um, there were um, rebels who think that the way she was handling the Brexit situation was quite disappointing. So um, they expected her to quit. So um, the expectation was that um, she will quit, and um, that is it. I mean, she's, she's gone. Uh, very finally, Wilbeck, what will this mean to her legacy? We know that she came in with lots of expectations uh, to go through this Brexit deal. She faced lots of opposition and she's had to step down. What will be her legacy? Her legacy will be one of um, disappointment um, to go down in history as a prime minister who failed to to um, sort of um, achieve um, the mandate um, spelled out to her by the British people. I mean, mind you, three years ago, she was elected into office with a specific mandate to take Britain out of the European Union, and she's failed. I mean, if you listen to her, she expressed dis her own disappointment in her inability to discharge on that mandate. Be that is may, as that is may, um, on the local front, I must say that um, she's been able to achieve some successes. Um, um, her handling of the economy in times of um, Brexit uncertainty, coupled with few um, um, enhancements of um, jobs in the job market. So in all, um, she's done good locally, but on the international front, it's been quite disappointing. I thank you very much for your time. Uh, Herbert Osei Welbeck is a journalist in the United Kingdom, bringing us up to speed with the very latest development with regards to the uh, resignation of uh, the UK Prime Minister, Theresa May. Now, let's do some entertainment news now.
Now, in entertainment, a member of the VGMA board, Ni Aiti Hammond, has justified the sanctions handed Stoneboy and Shatawale, stressing the verdict only reflects the severity of the actions. I think the, the verdict is a reflection of the action. You get me? So, um, if you say it's too harsh, it then means that the action was too harsh. The action that they did, which led to the verdict, was too harsh. Celebrated media personality and member of the VGMA board, Kofi Otredako, thinks the sanctions are necessary to safeguard the sanctity of the VGMA brand and restore sanity in the music industry. As a board, we thought we need to send our signal so that if something like that should happen in future, people would know the, the consequences. You know, hence our decision to, to indefinitely ban them. I don't think it's a hard decision. Imagine if things had gone bad, if the fans had um, had clashed, if there had been a bloodbath in the auditorium. We didn't have to wait for that, you know. So we thought it wise to really um, have a very tough sanction against um, the two gentlemen. Some music lovers have also been reacting to the indefinite ban of Shatawali and Stoneboy from the VGMA scheme. Yeah, to my view, it's fair. Because as public figure, you shouldn't do certain things. And if they, we are a nation that we are now coming up, so other children are looking up to them. So there's a, a, an emergency on them to put up a right behavior. The industry is bigger than these two people. But it's just at this moment, they have the privilege to be reigning. A bass of fans in Ghana, GH, you know, a bass music, you know, Stoneboy, Shatawale, Sakodi, I'm going to put a gun up. In case there's a mono, a a bear door, a more fans, no more programs near the other day. The man does to so door. I more It's normal because you know, you can't just cause chaos and go scot free like that. You have to be punished, definitely. And then being banished from the VGMA for some years is normal. After all, some are going to benefit from it, some are going to lose. All right, on that note, uh, we conclude Media Life here on TV3. It came to you live from our studios here at Adesawe in Kanda, Accra. Thanks very much for watching. My name is Park Yasari. For more news, you can log on to our website, www.3news.com.